Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dicium, which is a very interesting proposition of the game because in this one box you get four completely different styles of gameplay, all driven by these awesome Dicium dice. They are multicolored, multi use, and they give you a lot of gameplay variety. You could play Dicium Civilization, which is kind of an era of antiquities voyage of discovery and conquest, or you could play Dicium Crazy Cup, which is kind of a wacky racers, everybody racing to the finish line, dropping all kinds of traps on each other to get ahead. Or you could play Dicium Shogun, where two players or two teams of players face off. One as crafty sneaky ninjas and the other as a brave samurai fighting to the death. Or finally, you could have Dicium Dungeon, a co-op dungeon crawl. And that's actually what I'm going to be demonstrating for you today. You can see here is the dungeon, and I'm going to be doing a solo run through of it uh, because, uh, you know, this is a game where everybody is traipsing around the dungeon. Everybody's working together to race against time to find the uh, Goblin King's crown before he ascends to his throne, and it pretty much plays the same. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, how many players are running around on the board. So I'm just going to be doing it uh, solo today. And if you want to know about the other four games, like here's the Shogun board uh, where you sneak around, here's the racing board, and on the other side of this is the Civilization board. I'm not going to flip it right now, but here's what the Civilization board looks like. If you want to know about the other games, you can go on ahead and hang out till I get to my extended playthrough. I'll cover the rest of them. But I'm going to be doing the main run through with the dungeon game because the interesting thing is, all four of these games are driven by the same 2 2 2 system where on your turn, you will get to roll your dice twice. You'll roll and re-roll, and then you'll get to do two actions, and then if you can, you can bank up to two dice that you'll save for the future, before your, for your next round. And like I said, all the games work the same core way, but what you do with those simple steps is a radically different game with these very cool, custom, colorful dice. So, let's talk about how we are going to try to beat the Goblin King in this dungeon. Now, uh, in the dungeon, there's an extra step. Before I do the 2-2-2 two, two, two of rolling action and then storing dice, at the beginning of every player's turn, they've got a deck of cards. There are good things in here, but there are more bad things. There's a bunch of, like a third of this deck is goblin cards, a third is traps, and a third is good stuff. And at the beginning of your turn, you're always going to reveal one. So, here's hoping I get a good one. And nope, it's a trap. Okay, for this turn, the defense of all monsters is increased by one. So this is not a good turn for me to try and fight somebody because they, they know I'm coming. Okay, now the other thing you do in the dungeon game, um, before you go on to the rolling and actions and then storing dice, is at the beginning of your turn, you can choose to teleport to any of the teleporters on the board. Now at the beginning of the game, I'm not on the board, so I have to come over here or here. But in some future turn, if I'm way over here and I'm like, ah, I... I've already done what I need to do. I came all the way over here to get this chest from the eye of the beholder there. On uh, my next turn, I can always start and you'll know, just teleport back to one of these teleporters so I can zip off someplace else. So where do I want to teleport to? Well, I don't want to fight this turn because of that. So if, if I want to come over here to get over to this chest really quick, there's somebody in the way, and instead of his normal defense of 7, it's an 8. So I think I'll start over here, because if I can get through this magic door, I can get to that treasure chest really quick. And to win, what I need to do is, I need to open 9 treasure chests, and I also have to find the goblin's crown, king's crown, which is in this chest, this chest, or this chest. Although the interesting thing is, the more bad guys I defeat, the fewer chests I have to open. Right now I have to open 9, but if I defeat a bad Bad guy, I only have to open eight chests plus find the crown. Alrighty, so where did this guy come from? Or this uh, this skeletal warrior? Oh, right there, there he is. Okay, so uh, I've chosen to start here. I've had my little event happen, and it's a trap. It's not a good event. Hopefully, in the next round, I'll get one. And now I'm going to do the two, 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 rolling, and then re-rolling if I want, doing two actions, and then storing dice if I've still got some. And in this game, at the beginning, I start with three dice. I, that's true for all the games, actually. I start with three, but it's possible that I could get to be where I'm rolling four or even five dice on my turn. So let's roll and see what I got. Okay, I've got a 2 and a 2 and a 3, but I also have a blue, a blue, and a yellow. Each die has two different functions. And now, if I want, I can re-roll 1, 2, 3, or none of them, and I can just live with what I got. So I need to think about what I want to do, because I can combine these dice to do different things. 
So, um, and, and every game has a different player board that gives you a chart so you can know at a glance what you can do. In here, all my actions are, around, are about moving around and casting fireballs and, and um, you know, searching and stuff like that. But in the Wacky Races game, there's a whole bunch of different special powers I've got. In the Shogun game, there's different powers I've got depending on whether I am the ninja or whether I am the samurai. It's an asymmetrical game. And in the Civilization game, as you can see, there are also all kinds kinds of different powers. The core system is always the same, but what you do with these dice is different. So, a single yellow die is interesting, because a single yellow die would let me move through a magic door. That's exactly what I needed. Two blue dice, um, well, let's see, if I, if I use these as numbers instead of colors, a pair lets me move two spaces. Every blue die lets me move one space. So either way, I can move. If I, if I just lived with this, I could go one, two, and then I could use this yellow to go through the door. That's perfect. I am crazy happy with my starting roll. I am not going to re-roll anything because this is exactly what I wanted. I will use these three dice. Now, there's one thing I might want to re-roll, though, because one of the most important things you could try to roll is numerically get a straight, a one, two, three. Because if I can get a straight of three dice, I will upgrade so that on my next turn, I'm rolling four dice. And then after that, if I can get a straight of four dice, I could upgrade finally so I'm rolling five dice every turn. So I could go for that, but you know what? I mean, this is so perfect, I'm just going to go with it. I'm not going to re-roll. And so now, I either use these dice as colors or numbers to do two actions. My first is, I'll use this as a pair. I'm ignoring the blue. A pair of dice lets me move two spaces. One, two. Although, like I said, uh, a, a single blue lets me move a space. So I could have used these as two blues and moved that way instead. Uh, so in the same result. That was my first action. My second action is, I will use this yellow to move through the magic door. And now I'm one step away from getting to the first treasure. And I'm done, because as soon as you use dice, they are spent. So I've spent all those, so I have no dice left over, so I can't bank them for the next turn. That was it. My first turn is over. That was pretty good. I am racing against the clock, because once I get to the bottom of this deck, that's when the Goblin King appears, and he will start walking up this path to ascend to his throne, and I don't have much time at that point to um, find the, the crown and all that. So, my first turn is over. Let's go to my second turn. First of all, we've got... Da! All right. A goblin has appeared. Place a goblin one space away from me. Now, you can see, in a solo game, there are three goblins. If I was playing with more players, there would be a bigger grouping of goblins um, so that I have more of a chance. Because as soon as all three of these goblins are on the board, if I have to put a fourth goblin down, I instantly lose because the dungeon is overrun. Again, as you can imagine, with more players, I'd have more, um, you know, more goblins because we're, you know, we're spreading around and all that. But in uh, a solo game, I, you know, and because I were spread around, we can fight more goblins. All by myself, i got to put one down. Now, it has to be adjacent. Sometimes I have to put two or three spaces away from me. So if this were a three, I could put it way over here, next to this bugbear. Um, but as is, I have to put it one space away. I can't put it here because they won't go unoccupied. I could put it over here, but then I can't get to them because I have to go back through the wall. And the thing is, once these guys are out, i got to fight them because if they keep appearing, I could lose. I could put him down here, because it doesn't matter. It, 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 the space has to be empty, but it doesn't matter if there's a wall between me or not. So I can put him over here, here, here. I cannot put him here. What the... No, I will go ahead and put him here. And, you know, so after I'm done with this chest... Well, see, after I go with this chest, I'd probably want to come down here, get through this skeleton to, um, you know, decrease the number of chests I have to find, and then get to this chest. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's just as well to come over, or, or, although, but, yeah, either way, to get out of here now, I am going to need to get through a magic wall, or I'm going to need that teleport spell, which is, oh, which one is that? That's uh, to do a teleport. It's uh, to walk through walls. I need three yellow, and then I can just walk through any wall. If I get five of a kind, which I can't do that, because I'm not even rolling five dice, I can basically teleport anywhere on the board. Eh. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just go on ahead and leave him right here, and then I'll plan to come out, and then come around this way, and then ultimately I'll go this way, or this way, we'll worry about that later. So anyway, so that was the event, and now, uh, on my turn, I don't have to stay here, I could teleport to a warp tile, I'm not going to do that, I'm because I'm right where I'm going to go, and now, it's going to be two and two, roll uh, twice, do two actions. Alrighty, I got a one, a four, and a five. Hmm, so this blue lets me move. So that could be one action. And then the other action, to open this chest, I have to pick the lock. And you can see right here, it shows me I need two green dice to pick that lock. I've got one green die. So for my second reroll, I could hope to um, get a green, because green is the most likely color I could get. There are two greens 
on these things. Um, and you'll know, also two blues. Only one red and one yellow. That's the toughest thing to get. So I get one more roll, and if I get lucky, I could get the green, and I could get this thing opened. Huh. Let's see here. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's go for that. Let's see. Um, yeah. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Nope, I didn't get it. That's unfortunate. All right. And, um, you know, right now, I don't... There's nothing else I can do. I have not unlocked... Oh! 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 Uh, I have not played the dungeon game most recently. I forgot. In the dungeon game, everybody starts with a bonus. I permanently have, because I am the thief character, I permanently have a one die, or a one green die bonus. It's like I've always got an extra die, and it doesn't have a number, it's just green. I always have that to help me out. So what was I? I think this was originally a four. So, I've already got the move. And with, with the green and the green, I've already got this. So, what do, what do I want to do with this? I could re-roll it anyway. Mm. But, you know, if anything, I wanted to re-roll this. Because if I could get a three, then I could get a straight. I would like to start rolling four dice. But I'm going to leave that. I'm gonna, and mm, I could bank this. I, you know, because I'm going to use these. I'm going to have a die left over. I could bank that as a red. But if I'm going to bank something... I don't necessarily want to bank a red, because red has to do with combat. And I'm not doing any combat right now. But it, maybe I want to bank this, because after I'm done, maybe I'll be able to get back out here and fight this for next turn. But if I want to bank anything, ideally, I'd like to bank a blue, so I have guaranteed movement. Or I'd like to bank this, because it's green, which is nice, because it can help me start upgrading and all that. But also, this is a wild card number. So I'm going to re-roll again. So I'm living with these, because I already have the extra green bonus, which I forgot. And, oh, I got another blue. Okay, I'm happier banking that blue. So, now, I've done my two rolls. I'm going to do two actions. First, I'm going to move, which means I've spent that. And second, I need two green. I'm going to spend this plus this. This is a permanent bonus. I, it's, I always have plus one green if I use a green die. If I didn't have any green dice, then I can't use my green bonus. But since I did, that's two. And I have opened the chest. And, hey! That's a nice reward. I get to immediately remove a goblin from anywhere on the map. Now I don't have to go back and fight this guy. Boom! Awesome. And this is my first treasure that I have found. Eight more to go. Okay. And uh, and now I've done my two actions. I've got one die left over. I will bank that for the next round, and I'm done. Okay, on to round three. Time is ticking. Let's see here. More! Ah, place a goblin three spaces away from me. That's a little bit nastier. So... And again, I can ignore walls and all the rest of that, but I gotta put him somewhere. Uh, one, two, three, which would be on the other side of this. One, two, I can't put him up here. I can't put him here. So I can either put him one, two, three over here or over here, and I must do this. Uh, this is the area I'm wanting to come down to. Although, remember, if I don't want to, I don't have to walk back out of this because I'm gonna be able to teleport out of here and come back up here. Maybe I should just have him go one, two, three, because then I could just walk down and get him. And I don't have to worry about getting yellow dice anymore to worry about being stuck in this little secret chamber. Yeah, I'm going to put it over there. And now, the last thing I do before my turn starts is, I could teleport here or here. I will teleport up here because I want to get over here and take this guy out before I'm, we're overrun by goblins. And now I am ready to go. Now, remember I banked this. That does not mean I get to roll four dice this turn. It means I'm going to roll these... And before I roll, I can decide whether to bring this. Because I'm still only rolling three dice. It's just I knew for a guarantee I had a blue two. Now, if I don't want to keep that blue two, I can add it and re-roll all three. But I'm happy with this because I do want to move. So I'm just going to roll the other two and let's see what I get. Wah! Okay. I got that wild. I'm look Oh my gosh, look at this. It's a one, two, three. Right. Okay. I could re-roll. I'm not going to. And also, by the way, if I wanted to re-roll this, I would also, again, be able to say whether I wanted to re-roll this or not. But I'm leaving it. I'm leaving everything alone. And this turn is going to be a little bit wasteful, because I get to do two actions, but I'm only going to do one. Here's a one, two, three. Or a two, three, four, because this is a wild number. It's a green color, but it's a wild number. So that's a straight. I have unlocked another die. Woohoo! Okay, I am rolling four dice from now on, which is indicated there. Which is a, means I don't do anything else for my second action, but that's okay. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. And um, let's move on to the next turn, shall we? And, oh, finally, something worthwhile. This is a scroll. This is I can use one time to walk through a bad guy without having to fight. So... Like, I need an 8 to beat this guy. If I hold on to this, I can just waltz right through him and get the treasure and then teleport out. So, this is a scroll, which means it sticks around 
Now, see, these ones are gone. These, these are gone. This sticks around until I actually use it. There's also good cards in here, potentially, because, look, there's a whole bunch of cards that are not in here because you need all these other cards to build the uh, the timer decks for all players because all players would have their own deck full of traps and treasures and whatnot that serves as a timer. But as it is, I'm going to save this and use it later. All right. Um, and right, I haven't actually teleported back. Do I want to teleport back? Yeah, I do because, again, I don't want to have to mess around with uh, trying to roll yellows. And now I'm going to roll twice with my four dice. Wah! And there's that yellow I would have needed to get back out. Okay, but that's all right. That's all right. Oh, I've got a one. I've got a three, four, five. Boom. I think that's going to be one of my two actions is upgrading. I'm going to use that straight. I'm not touching those. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, folks. This is why you should always watch the Klingon subtitles turned on because I do make rules goofs. Usually small ones, but this was a biggie, so let me just correct the record here. To upgrade your dice pool to get more dice, you do need to get a straight, as I said, but the straight has to always start with a one. And it has to always use all the dice you've got. So in this case, to upgrade, I would have had to get a 1, 2, 3, 4. Not a 3, 4, 5. Not a 2, 3, 4. Not a 2, 3, 4, 5. It would have to be a 1, 2, 3, 4. So that first upgrade is not too tough to get. But the subsequent ones get much tougher to pull off. And you're going to see me repeat this mistake through the rest of this video and the next video. So just bear in mind, I should not be getting extra dice, increasing my dice pool, nearly as quickly and easily as I have. It's something you have to work for. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's continue. Do I want to re-roll this? Um, what can a single green do for me? Nothing. But remember, since I've got another green, I could use two greens to do the search action. And the search action is unlock another special power. Now, since this is a level two, it's two greens, that means I can unlock this, which means from now on, it's like I've got an extra green and an extra blue. I like that a lot. I am not going to re-roll this. I'm happy with it. I'm done re-rolling. I'm going to do two actions. First of all, I'm going to upgrade. So now I'm rolling five dice. Second action, a green plus another green. That's two greens. I am going to unlock this. So now it's like I've got an extra blue, so it's going to be easier to move around in the dungeon for the rest of the game. And plus I've got this as well. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, let's keep uh, dungeon delving. It's another trap! Going through magic doors costs more, um, one more yellow. Not a big deal. I have no reason to go in here. Now, do I want to jump? No, I still need to get over here and take this because I haven't run across any more goblins yet. I'd be really scared if I hadn't gotten that treasure to take out the goblins because there'd be two goblins and I could lose at any second. I'd have to rush over here. But uh, things are going okay now, so let's just stay where I am and roll them bones. Wah! Ooh, I could go for a big walkabout. Um, I've also got four of a kind. Four of a kind is... Uh, or Yeah! My, wow, that's crazy. It's four of a, of, a, of a kind, both in colors and numbers. Now, this just means I can move four spaces, because every blue is move a space. But four of a kind in terms of numbers is instantly wipe out a goblin anywhere on the board. That's crazy. If I get five of a kind, though, I could instantly teleport anywhere I want, which would also be nice. But no, I, I'm just going to take that... So one of my actions is going to be just wipe this guy out again. For my other action, I'm going to re-roll this because a single green plus my bonus green doesn't get me anything. I now need three greens or four or five to unlock these bonuses, like the ability to get another re-roll. So I'm going to re-roll this, and I'm going to hope for a blue, because then two blues at least would let me move two spaces. Here we go. I got exactly what I started with. Okay, no more re-rolling because I haven't unlocked that ability. And so now I'm going to do two actions. One of them is just instantly nuke a goblin from orbit. So I've spent that. For my second action, I've got one, two greens. Two greens by itself won't do anything unless I happen to be on a chest that needed them. So I'm just going to go on ahead and bank this. Maybe I'll use it for later or maybe I'll re-roll it. That was that turn. That trap is over. And now I can only play one action this round. Arg! Why couldn't this trap have happened last turn when I only did one action? Okay, here we go. Oh, and let's see. Do I want to teleport? Now I'm not so worried about that goblin. Do I want to run over here and try to fight this guy to get to this chest? Or, um, you know, if I'm going to have to fight a level 7, well, uh, this chest is 1, 2, 3, 4. This chest is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this chest is easier to get to. It's also guarded by a, a level 7. So I'm going to choose to teleport over here. First you do this, then you choose to teleport if you want to, then you start rolling. And before I roll, I could, I could add this to my pool or I could leave it as a green 1. 
I, I'm, I'm not that bothered. I'm gonna add it. I want to get. I want to move it, move it. I want to get over here as fast as I can to fight this thing. Because remember, also, the more I fight, the fewer chests I have to find. So let's go. Let's see what we got. Whoa. Okay. Oh my gosh. Three. Uh, that's a full house, everybody, right there. A full house is very, very cool because it lets you move three spaces and instantly obliterate any monster, whether it's a goblin or a full monster. You just plow right through them. And you move three spaces? Come on. I could go for rerolls, but I am very... I, it, yeah, it's a full house. Um, it means I'm giving up on three blues, which would be three movement, and two, which wouldn't do anything for me. So I'd have to reroll if I wasn't happy to go with this. Although, remember, this could also be considered a three of a kind. Now, that's interesting. A two of a kind, a, a two pair, lets me move two. And then three of a kind lets you move three. And if I attack, I have plus one to my attack. So, I could use these to move three spaces and wipe out anything, or I could use these to move five spaces, and if I run into a bad guy, I get plus one. You roll this die to fight stuff, whether it's other players in the other games or monsters in this co-op game. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, I, one, two, three, four, five, and if I'm standing on this space, it's like I've got plus one for green. So this is a good place to stand if I'm trying to unlock more abilities. But I rolled a full house. I'm going to use it. So I get to move one, two, three, and there's no fighting. There's no rolling combat. I just plowed this guy into the dirt by using the power of that. And um, I now only need to open eight chests instead of nine. Um, and as always, time, and I used all my dice for that one action, Hey, I could only play one action anyway. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty nice. Nice. I could do one action. It was about the best action I could do. And so we're done. Let's move on to the next round. And okay. Oops. I have another scroll that will stick around. Uh, this one. Discard this to remove a goblin from the board. Uh, this game, I'm getting lucky. I'm totally keeping those goblins under control. But like I said, there's a lot of other things. Um, you know, just instantly get, unlock any bonus you want. Probably a really expensive bonus. Um, although getting that uh, reroll would be nice. Uh, walk through any wall you want. Um, add one green bonus to your green combination. And that's a permanent effect. It sticks around forever. Lots of different bonuses available. But anyway, so um, I don't have any goblins on the board right now. So I'm not worried about that, but I'll save that for when one comes out. Alrighty. So, uh, that's pretty good. By the way, at standard difficulty, there's an equal number of blue uh, good cards, red trap cards, and green spawn goblin cards. Uh, alrighty. But if you want to play harder, the uh, difficulty changes and there's more greens and reds and fewer blues. Let's go on ahead and roll because I'm just going to stay where I am. I just need to move one space and get two greens. And what do I got here? Alrighty. So... I've got another flush, but or I'm not a straight. But straights don't matter anymore to me because I've already maxed out on my um, my rolls. So I've got a pair. I've got a. I've got two blue, two greens, and since I've got three greens, that's really three greens. So I could use these two plus that green and unlock a permanent yellow or a permanent red. I have a yellow, which doesn't do me any good. Although if I come around here, it would let me get through this magic door. But you know, it's just as easy to come back around this way. Although, if I were coming back around this way, I could get through this magic door to get up here. Because if I go this way, i got to fight this spider to get over to that chest. Hmm. I've got one, two movement, because I've got two blues. But that's just thinking about colors. What about numbers? Um, let's see. Actually, I've got a whole bunch of unique numbers. Remember, although, remember, this is any number. So I've got a pair, um, although a pair is moving two spaces. So I could use like this and this. And I could consider that a pair. Two threes, which is two spaces. And then two more. So I just from all this... I could spend all those to move four spaces. Although, unfortunately, you cannot interrupt action with other action. So right now, I only want to move one space as my first action. And then my second action is I want to open the chest. I totally forgot about that. Let's just focus on that. Let's say I'm going to use this to open the chest. I'm going to use this to move. Those are going to be my two actions. I'm going to finish this. So the rest of my card, but I'm definitely going to bank this. Um, so I can bank a wild card, which helps me get with combinations and whatnot. Getting a, getting two pair, for instance, lets me put this teleporter anywhere I want, orthogonally up to three spaces away. So I could put it, you know, over. Well, unfortunately, I'd like to put it here or here. If I if I were standing here, I could put it here, and then boom, I could just teleport at the beginning of my turn to this chest, as an example. So ha, um, I'm going to bank that. I'm going to reroll these and hopefully get some more uh, wild cards to bank. This is my reroll, and I didn't get it. All right, I could bank the movement. I'll bank the red. Am I planning on fighting? I'm not planning on fighting. Reds, um, they let me pump up red actions, which in this game means fighting. 
It can mean other things in different games. I'll just go on ahead and bank this so I've got more movement. Alrighty. So, um, I, I've rolled twice. I'm going to do two actions. One of which is going to be to move one space, and the other is going to be to spend green, green. Although I could move two spaces, but I'm only moving one because I stopped. And I've opened my second chest. And then the other die isn't used, and I'm going to bank these two dice. What was my second chest? Hey, I was just saying this. I can deploy the... I will just deploy it right there. I can skip right past this bad guy and get to that chest. Boom! Alrighty, and that means I've opened two chests. So, um, I'm still looking to open six more. Alrighty, that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. And I've still got my two powers. I haven't needed to use them yet. What's next? It's a trap! Alright, opening chest costs one more green. Uh, so unfortunately, um, I, I can, I can, right. So anyway, that's my trap. Chests are hard to open. I'm going to use this to teleport over here because I, I begin my turn. I can always start any teleport. And now let's roll. I needed one blue. Um, you know, and I need at least one blue because even though I've got this, this only works if I spend a blue die. It doesn't do any good on its own. So I need a blue. So I'm going to keep this so I can move. I'm going to keep this so that I can guaranteed um, because then this is one, two, but I need at least one more green because of the trap to open that chest. And what do I got? I got no greens. Oh, I don't like that. That's bad news because I need three greens this round. And I've only got two. Shoot. Shoot the boot. Although, interestingly, I got two reds. If I wanted to, I could come over here and fight. And that means to fight, I have to beat a six, which means I have to roll this, and I'd have I have a one in six chance of beating it. But for every red die I've got, that um you know, it basically adds one. So I'd suddenly go down to a 50-50 chance to beat that little demon. And if I beat him, remember, then I don't have to open as many chests. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot! I totally forgot! I have been cheating myself this whole time because every time you beat a monster, not only... It says it right here. How could I forget this? Folks, always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. I'm sure Paulo noted that a while ago. But anyway, in addition, every time you beat a monster, you um, need fewer chests and you, give, you get to unlock any one bonus you want. So I should have taken the really expensive ones, the fours or the fives. I could give myself other re-rolls. I could give myself... A, so it's like I've got two permanent blues, so that when I want to move, I can move really far. Or if I want to fight, I'm a better permanent fighter. I've had this for a while. Um, ever since I beat that... Um, wait a minute, when did I beat a monster? Oh, that's right. I, I plowed through that guy with my uh, full house. That's what I did. Oh, speaking of which, I've got a full house again. I've got two fives and um, three fours. So since I can't open this round, I can full house and beat this guy and not have to worry. Yeah, baby! Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. So first of all, uh, it means I'm running away, but it means I'm taking out bad guys, and it's, it's working out in the end. So uh, previously, let's say I'd taken that bonus. Not that I... Because I haven't fought any yet, so that doesn't make anything. Right. So I've rolled. I could re-roll, except I'm not going to. I'm taking my full house, and I'm going to do another charge. One, two, and now unfortunately the full house charging rule says you cannot turn back around. I'd like to turn back around and come back here, but I can't. So I can move up to three. I'll just move one, two, just instantly toast this guy, not have to bother with the combat die. If I fight a monster and I lose, I just get knocked back to a nearby tele to any teleporter I want. All I do is I lose time and I waste dice. But anyway, I've beaten this guy, and that means I get another permanent unlock. Let's take the reroll. So now I can do three rerolls a turn instead of two. Okay, cool. And that didn't cost me four green dice to get that. So that was it. That was my. I only did one action, but it was a pretty good action uh, since I wasn't gonna be able. To, I was gonna have a hard time opening that chest anyway. That was pretty nice. Let's move on to our next round. Woohoo! Hey, it's it's my third scroll. I'm drowning in scrolls. Alrighty, discard this to roll combat die. So if I ever do fight somebody, because sooner or later I'm going to have to fight these guys, because the more I fight, the fewer chests I have to open. And the important thing is, I have to find the crown. The crown is not in any of these little chests. The crown is here, here, or here. So i got to start traveling around. I, and, you know, i got to find that crown. The farther I can move, but, you know, ugh, alrighty. Anyway, so I've got that. Uh, I have no di bank dice. I'm down here. I will just go on ahead and say, I'm just going to re-teleport to that. Although if I had another player, I might have run away and another player might do this and open that chest. But as it is, I'm going to re-teleport to that. And we're going to roll and I'm going to open that chest. Because there's no traps this turn. Whee! Okay, what do I got? Two turntables and a microphone. Why do I always say that? That's where it's at. Alrighty, so I need one blue. So this is the blue to move up here. And I need two greens. So here's the two greens. Alright, so that's it. So these are the dice I'm not using. I'm going to bank this. And so I'm just going to re-roll these and try to bank some more wild cards. Nope. I'll bank an extra movement because I don't need fireballs or moving. Uh, yellow is... Uh, one, you saw me move through a door. Two is cast a fireball, which means I can attack. And if I lose, 
Um, I don't get hurt, and my attack is stronger than normal. Uh, I, three, I can walk through a solid wall, and four, I can just instantly take out any goblin or put the, the, the teleporter around. All right, so I'm going to lock that in, not using that this turn. My two actions are going to be, what were they? Oh, um, it was the, the move one and spend two and open my third chest. Okay, and I am done, and hey... That's no good. I've already unlocked all my dice. No! Because I got those straights early on. Oh, well. Still, the important thing is I'm opening chests. That's what I'm here in this dungeon to do. And we're on to the next round. Where? More goblins! He has to appear two spaces away from me. So he could be over here, or over here, on the crown itself. Over here, but not over here. And... Hmm... Over here... Because I, I can come back out, you know, I can even teleport. Yeah, let's put it over here, and then I'm going to come back out and start working. Because now, I'm pretty much done with this area. I mean, I don't have to. I could come over here and fight this guy, but... No, I, I think... Yeah, I'm just going to put him right there. So that was the uh, thing. Another goblin appeared. If two more appear, or three more appear... Well, how many goblins have we seen? I think the default deck... Yeah, I don't have to worry about goblins overrunning, because there's only two more goblin cards in the deck. Although it's not as simple as that, because as we keep going, and, um, you know, there's another goblin, and I wouldn't be afraid. Oh, and uh, my combat dice are worth uh, six, but only this round, so this would be a good round to fight. And, um, oh, permanent boots of walking! And um, the other goblin, that would have put the third goblin out. But then, no big deal. Oh, it would have been a trap. Um, you know, my, oh, I can't keep my stored dice. No big deal. But then, finally, the Goblin King himself comes out, and this is the end timer. What happens happens is, at the beginning of every turn, instead of drawing from here, and you know, this happens on every player's turn, so the timer comes really fast. You roll the combat die. On a 1-2-3, he only moves one space, and he tries to spawn a goblin. And then you could instantly lose. If I had all those goblins and I hadn't taken them out, the Goblin King could instantly win. On the flip side, if he rolls high, a 4, 5, or 6, he moves two, because he's just rushing over here. And so, um, I have a few more cards to get through before he appears, and he becomes the final timer. And that's with me running around, using dice, getting combos, going for color combos or number combos, racing against the clock, fighting bad guys in Dicium Dungeon. Dungeon, specifically. And now that's a basic run-through, not only of the dungeon game, but also the core gameplay. The core, roll twice, do two actions, bank two dice. You've seen how it works in a cooperative dungeon crawl, and now if you want to hit that eye in the top right corner screen, you can go to the extended playthrough, where we'll be seeing how it works in a civilization building game, in a wacky car race, and in a two-player asymmetrical battle of wits. Or you can just go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.